All right, we're back in, on the record on State versus Lloyd, who's present with his attorney, State Attorney's Office is present. Ready to go? Can't hear you. We'd like to call Brian Savelli. Same objection as before. Yes, Your Honor. I'm going to sustain the objection. I think it's hearsay. It's double and triple hearsay. It's already been testified to by Mr. Lloyd. So, uh, do you have any other witnesses, Mr. Lenneman? Do you have any other witnesses? All right. So I'm going to let you rest in front of the jury. Let's bring him back up. Judge will rest. Um, Hold on. I want you to do it in front of the jury. Oh, and then can I have like five minutes to do my put my JOA together? Your JOA is after their rebuttal. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, no, you can't. Let's bring the jury back in. State recognized presence of the jury? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes. All right. Welcome back, folks. Mr. Lenneman, you may call your next witness. Judge, at this time, the defense rests. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the defense has rested their case. The state has an opportunity to put on a rebuttal case if they should choose. State, you may call your first witness. State calls Ronald Stewart. Can you hear me, Mr. Stewart? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I recognize Mr. Stewart. Sorry. Mr. Lenneman, you recognize him to be Mr. Stewart? Mr. Stewart, raise your right hand, please. Raise your right hand, Mr. Mr. Stewart. Mr. Stewart, can you hear me? This is Judge Marquez. Raise your right <coughs> hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. You may inquire. Can you please state your name for me, sir? You can put your hand down. My name is Ronald Allen Stewart, Jr. What do, you, what do you do for a living? I'm a software engineer. And where? what state do you live in now? I live in Texas. Okay. Uh, do you have a degree that lets you do software engineering? Uh, no, I don't have a degree particularly okay. for software engineering. Understood. Let me direct your attention to December 13th of 2016. Where were you that evening? I was at my mom's house. And what was her address? Address is 6031 Lone Key Drive, Orlando, Florida. Back then, how tall were you? 6'2". What did you weigh? Roughly around 180. What's your, mom? What's your mom's name? Stephanie Dixon Daniels. What were you doing that night at your mom's house? I was building out a web application. What do you mean by that? Um, like um, during the time I wasn't doing trucking during that time, so I was doing projects and stuff for clients. So I was building out this one application for a client. Okay, do you repeat that one more time for me? I had the volume too high up. Was... Uh, no, I was just saying um, during that time I wasn't doing trucking during that time, 
and I was actually working on a web application for a client that I was uh, working with. Okay. Did you know Sade Dixon? Yes. What relationship was she to you? She was my sister. Do you know a man named Marquis Floyd? Yes. How do you know Marquis Floyd? Um, first, I met him as my, my sister introduced me to him as a personal trainer um, in my mom's house at the kitchen table. Um, and then later on, like their boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm showing you what's been marked as States Exhibit BV for identification. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes. What does this show? It shows the um, front of my mom's house. Okay. Does this fairly and accurately depict what the front of your mom's house looked like on December 13th of 2016? Yes. This time, State would move BV into evidence as next in line. Any objection? This will be received without objection as States Exhibit Number 62. May I publish, Your Honor? You may. Do you have a copy of this same photograph I just showed you available for you to look at, too? Yes. Okay. While you were working on this web application at your mom's house that night, where were you located in relation in the house? Um, when we first entered through the doorway, I was right past the stairway uh, room, going to like a, a diner room kind of area. That was like my office on slash bedroom area Hold during on, that time. Sir. Hold on, Ron, one second. I'm sorry? Okay, I'm going to... Okay, hang tight, Ron. Okay, let me, uh, I'm going to ask you a question about the photograph. You said that you were in, right. you were in a room in the front of the house? Yes. Okay, in the room that we're looking at, is that the room to the direct right of the red front door on the far left of the photograph? Yes. Okay. That window area, that would be my, where my room was. Were you able to see the front yard from that room? Yeah, I was able to see from the front yard. But I think during that time the blinds were closed. But yeah. Did there come a time when Mark Keith Lloyd arrived at your house that night? Uh, yes. How'd you learn he was there? He knocked on my window um, that night and asked if she. And then I went to the door and she asked if um, the shot if you can come out so he can talk. All right. Still having trouble with the volume for the court reporter, please. Yeah, I'm going to turn the volume even down a little bit more because you're there's a little bit of a feedback. So can you repeat your answer again? How did you know that Mr. Lloyd was there? Um, so yeah, I knocked on the window of my room door, win, um, room window. And for for the most part, after he knocked on the window, I went to the door and he asked if um, Sade can come out to talk. And was your sister Sade there at the time? Yes, she was in the kitchen area during that time. What did you do when he asked if Sade was there? Um, was, I closed the door and asked Sade if she, um, Marquis is out there. And what did Sade do? Uh, she went outside and um that was it okay and while Charday was outside what were you doing i just went back to my um office desk near the window and um just went back to building my application at some point did Charday come back in the house um yes she okay. did about how long after she left the first time did she come back in the house um probably between 30 to 45 minutes, possibly. Do you know if she left the house or what she was doing during that period of time? 
Um, no. Okay. After Sade came back to the house, did she come inside? Yes. And what'd she do? Uh, she went upstairs, and then uh, soon after, she went right back downstairs and went out the door. Do you know what she did upstairs? No. Do you also have a younger brother named Dominique? Yes. At some point during this, did he come home? Yes. Do you remember about when he came home? Um, <sighs> Not the time, but in the sequence of events. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to remember, but it definitely is probably a little bit before my sister came back in, I don't want to say. Okay. After your sister came back in the house, went upstairs, came back downstairs, and went outside, did you hear something that drew your attention towards the garage area? Yes, there was um, a bang on the garage door. And I asked everyone in the house, did they hear that? And they said they didn't. Okay. Um, so I actually went to the back garage door area near the kitchen area, and um, opened up the door. And yeah, I saw through the window, um, Charlie on one side and Marquis on the other side. Okay, so you went through your kitchen door. Did you go actually into the garage where you could see in the garage? Um, I just, I just um, opened the door. Um, and checked if it was like my dog uh, who knocked on the door and she looks kind of like freaked out. Okay. So um, I looked at her and yeah, I looked up, you know, it was a window near the um, the garage door. So you can see through the window, the two cars and Charlie was on the left side of the car and my chief was on the right hand side of the car, okay. closest to the front door. So as you're, you're, I'm assuming your garage door is closed at this time? Yes. But there are windows that you can see out into the driveway area through the garage door? Yes. Okay. And you said that your sister was on one side of the car and Mr. Lloyd was on the other side? Yes. Which car are we talking about? We see two cars in the photograph. Which car? That was the one closest to the front door. Okay. So the SUV type? On the left-hand side. Okay. And yeah. if photograph your sister was on the passenger side of that car am i correct yes that's correct and markeith was on the driver's side yes okay. when you saw them in that position and you saw your sister looking freaked out like you said what did you do um yeah she looked really scared her eyes were wide open um i nearly put on my shoes put on a, um, a hoodie and uh, went outside the door. And did you go out the red front door that we see in the photograph? Yes, the front door, yes. When you got outside and walked out the front door, where was your sister, Sade, and where was the defendant? Or where was Mr. Lloyd? Mr. Lloyd was still on the passenger side of the car, and my sister was on the... Well, I'm sorry, um, Mr. Lloyd was on the... Um, driver's side of the car and Charlie was on the passenger side. When you walked out, did you say anything to anybody? So, uh, y'all good? Okay, you said, is, are y'all good? Is that what you said? Um, they said they're good. Okay. Um, well, it doesn't look like you guys, yeah. Repeat that last thing you said, Mr. Stewart. I said, are you guys doing good? And did Mr. Lloyd say anything in response? Uh, yeah, he said, um, yeah, we're, we're doing good. Uh, we're just talking. And, and um, so it doesn't look like you guys doing much talking right now. Okay. Did your sister say anything when you asked if they were good? Um, yeah, she said, yeah, uh, we're good. You know, you can go back inside. Okay. Um, yeah, and I accept that answer. Repeat that last thing again. Um, my sister said she, she, they were good and that I, I should go back inside. Okay. Um, and I said, it doesn't look like I, you guys are good. Okay. You said it doesn't look like you guys are good? Yeah. Okay. 
Did you stay where you were or did you start to walk towards them? Yeah, I was walking down uh, um, on a concrete path on the on house. And then um, as I was walking, um, Marquis was moving towards the center of the driveway out, out, out towards the street. And my sister was coming from the back of the passenger side of the car on the back on the left left hand side the driver's side of the car where she was standing a little bit behind me okay so as she is walking towards you did you say anything else to them um so um i don't recall too much other than uh marquis saying um yeah, she's 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 been I've been hearing that she's been smoking with my baby and also definitely another dude um with my baby. And then Shade said, Why are you telling our business? And why since you're telling our business, why are you gonna tell them that you had two guns pointed to my head uh in the backyard? Okay. Was your sister pregnant at the time? Yes. All right. At any time during this conversation, did your sister say anything about you being able to whip Mr. Lloyd's ass? Um, what is that again? At any time during this conversation, did your sister Sade say anything about you being able to quote whip Mr. Lloyd's ass? Yes, um, she did say that. I said no, we're not going to be doing a fighting today. After your sister said these things, did you do anything to try to end the situation or de-escalate what you saw happening? Um, yes, I pretty much was telling that Shadi should you know, walk, walk inside. And um, on one second, um, my sister, I told my sister she should walk inside the house and Mark King should um, go go away in his car. Yeah, I need to talk about this another day because this is not a situation that we need to be talking about right now, um, today. How did Mr. Lloyd respond to that? Um, me and my sister started walking towards the door when I told her to go inside, and then Mr. Lloyd was saying, uh, no, 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 she ain't going nowhere. I'm talking about this today. Okay. What did your sister do? Um, she stopped and um, she was really frightened during that time. At some point around this time, did you see your sister start moving quickly towards the house? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, um, at some, at some time, um, uh, when he was still talking and stuff like that. And as we said, no, 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 he's, she's not going nowhere. Um, I do remember my sister running but it wasn't i didn't see her running right away i saw marquis running and i looked behind me and she wasn't there no more and i seen on the other side of me that she was running towards the door so i started running right behind her again down that path towards that red door that we see in the photograph yes on uh going inside words inside the pillar what happened when you got to the door uh, the door seemed to be locked uh, she was banging on the door, and I stood in front of her, in front of the door, and seen Marquis put out the gun from his jacket and cocked it back. Um, and then um, I told him, yo, it's not that serious, bro. And then I heard a pop, and then I fell uncontrollably to the floor. And, um, right, let, me stop, let me stop you there. And, yeah. Okay. Where was Mr. Lloyd standing when you saw him first with the gun and him cock the gun? Um, just like in the middle of the, of the yard. Okay. About how far away was he from you and your sister? Um, I'd say approximately 10 to 12 feet, I want to say, or more. After you saw Mr. Lloyd raise the gun, you said you heard a pop yeah and what happened after you heard that pop um i fell down um i was parking 
ringing my ears, um, fell down on the floor, couldn't move my body, and my all my my limbs just locked up. I, I couldn't just down to the on my left side of my body. What was the last thing you said? The last phrase? Um, yo, bro, it's not that serious. No, what, the last the answer to the last question. You felt you're you couldn't control the limbs of your body. What, would you, what else did you say? Um, yeah, I fell down on the left side of my body. Were you still conscious and aware of what was happening after you fell? Yes. Okay. Did you? Um, the ringing went away. Yeah, I'll go for it. Did you eventually figure out what caused you to fall to the ground? Yeah. What? Um, I mean, it definitely was a bullet. Um, I felt like someone kicked me in my stomach. Um, and I continued to hear her by more popping, um, come closer and closer. And more stuff like hitting my face as the popping is going. Um, I felt like rocks or something. But um, yeah, I kept continuing to hear him pop. I was shooting gun and kept on going with it in towards the right side of the pillar, um, where he came on the inside of the pillar and there, continued to shoot her. Yep. Um, after you were shot in the stomach initially and fell to the ground, do you know where your sister Sade was? Um, she actually ran towards me, shaking me. Um, she was she came towards you, you said? Telling me to get up. Hello? She came towards you, you said? Yeah, she went towards me outside the pillar. All right. And at, at this point, you're on the ground shot. Where are you located in the photograph that the jury's looking at? Um, I'm like towards the doorway on the right hand side of the doorway on the more on the right on the uh, on the first side on the right pillar side. Okay, so we see two pillars. And in between is the red door. You're more towards the, the right pillar next to the door? Yes. Okay. After you go down, your sister comes to your side. Do you hear additional gunshots? Yeah, more gunshots. Um, popping, and I'm just seeing him run towards the right hand side of the pillar uh, more and more. more. Is it, you said, did Mr. Lloyd run to the right side of the pillar? Yeah, Mr. Lloyd run right towards us. Repeat that last line. Um, yeah, Mr. Lloyd running to the right hand side of the pillar um, and continue shooting. Okay. Did Mr. Lloyd eventually come onto the concrete stoop where you were on the ground and your sister was next to you? Um, yes, he came through the the side that we ran towards initially and was continuing to shoot my sister and he stepped over me during that time. After he, did he at some point step over you? Did he step over you? Yeah. Okay. After he stepped over you, what, hold on. After he stepped over you, did he and continued to shoot? Did he turn his attention to you again? Yeah, he um, he was shooting my sister, and then he stopped, and then um, came towards me and pointed the gun at me. Um, it seemed like he was pointing at my heart, and I tried to try. Um, rotate my body to the left so he doesn't hit it. Um, but he just continued to shoot up upwards, hitting my leg, and then hitting more parts of my body, and um, also hitting my chest. How many times did Mr. Lloyd shoot you? Um, Roughly around five times. About five times, did you say? Yeah. Do you remember where in your body you were struck? 
um, my left leg, my right leg, my arm, uh, my abdominal, and also in my heart. After you were shot, at some point, did you hear the front door of your house open? Um, yes. Um, yeah, the front door did open. Um, and then it immediately shut and slammed. And uh, by that time, Marquise had started running towards the car and still more shots come in the door. Did those shots that Mr. Lloyd fired as he was heading towards his car actually strike the door in the side of the house? I believe so. He was, he was firing towards the doorway. In the photograph I showed you, that we're looking at, which direction was Mr. Lloyd's car? It was the, um, pretty much like in the front of the house. Um, right in front of the house, on the, on the curb. If you're facing your house, would it be directly in front of the house, to the right, or to the left? Um, directly in front of the house, I'm already saying. At some point, were you able to tell that Mr. Lloyd left? Um, yes. Um, he left. He pretty much like, ran in front of his car and got inside, passed me his like, seat, you know, the driver's seat, and um, he left, went down the street. Uh, the only thing I saw was tail lights after that. What was the last thing you said? Um, the only thing I saw was tail lights after that. Okay, you saw um, tail lights. Okay. No. Were you taken to the hospital? Yes. How long did you stay there? Um, over a month. Did you have surgeries? Yes. Okay. Did your sister own a firearm? Yes. Had you seen it before? Yeah, I've seen it once before, before our dancing. Um, um, yeah. When did you see it in relation to your sister's murder? Um, it had to be like two months or um, past or so okay. before, before my sister. Um, yeah, it was in a iPad box. But I want to say it was roughly like two months before. You said it was in a box? Yeah, iPad box. What were the circumstances in which you saw that gun? Uh, she wanted to know how I can take out the magazine. And I told her I didn't know how to do that. Okay. Except for the gun that you saw Mr. Lloyd pull out and use to shoot you and your sister, did you ever see any other guns that night? I didn't see no other guns that night. Okay. I don't have any other questions for you, Mr. Lloyd. If you want to stay on the line, the defense lawyer is going to ask you some questions, okay? Thank you, sir. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Did you ever tell anybody that Marquise came to your house and banged on the door and Shade answered and Marquise gunned her down and, and you came to the door and he shot you? I said again, I can't hear you. Where's the microphone? Where's the microphone on this so you can't hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay.
did you ever tell anybody that Marquise came to your house, banged on your door, Shada answered, and Marquise gunned her down, and you came to the door and he shot you? No. So if that's something the detectives put out, then it wouldn't have come from you. Um, I mean, it's, it's a kind of weird sequence, but uh, I mean, yeah, that doesn't sound right. You would agree with me, sir, that this event was very traumatic for you? Very much, yes. And during that period of time, shortly after you got to the hospital, you found out that your sister was deceased? Yes. And... Um, I was going to say a little after. Okay. Um, yeah. And the tech detectives, when they came to talk to you, asked you numerous times if you had attacked Marquise, didn't they? Yes. And you kept denying it, right? Um, pretty much, yeah, I didn't attack him. Excuse me? I, didn't, I did not attack him. So when you say pretty much you didn't attack him, what does that mean? Um, I said I did not. Well, I mean, to be exact, it's just I did not attack him. Okay. And if you had attacked him, then you would agree with me that your sister's death may be in part to the actions you had committed? Objection, Your Honor. Call for speculation. Sustained. And the two detectives that came to talk to you were Detective Savelli and Detective Garcia Pagan. Remember that? Say again. The detectives that came to see you were Detective Savelli and Detective Pagan. Correct? Garcia Pagan. Um, I would say those names definitely didn't sound familiar. Um, can't remember to my to this day, but it sounds familiar. And they actually took two statements from you, didn't they? <clears throat> I believe so. And in the first one, you had given them some information about Marquis, but when they asked you why this happened, you told them you didn't want to talk about it. Remember that? Um <sighs> Don't, I can't remember exactly, but um, what was the context behind that? Well, let's start with this. Did the prosecutor tell you to make sure you had all your statements, your deposition, and your trial testimony nearby? Yes. And I, I do. You have that? Yeah. And so in this first statement, That's when you tell them that you don't want to talk about it. Um, what page is it? Um, I think it's towards the end. I don't have the date. What date is that, that statement given, Mr. Stewart? Um, it's, it says me. Okay. 16. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Did you send him both statements? Because he has two. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look at the other one. Do you have two in front of you? Yeah. 
I do see Detective Savelli and Detective Garcia on here, and that was December 15th. Okay. And you told them that you didn't want to talk about it, right? Um, what page is that? I said I think it's towards the end. Um, is it nine, page 19? Is that the page? Uh, 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 Give me a number at, uh, at the bottom. It doesn't have like a 241 on it or 242. Did you find it? I'm sorry. I didn't find it. Um, I'm still looking for it. Um, I think it's page six line. But is there a number? I think it's page six line 18. Page six line 18. I think that's the page on the first statement. Were you given a first statement uh, to review? How yeah, I was given a first statement. So you have two statements that you gave, right? Yes. I'm still not seeing the page or the item that you're seeing. Apparently that statement wasn't um, that that statement wasn't recorded. It was the actual recording. Do you remember specifically not wanting to talk to them about it the first time that they talked to you? Um can't remember exactly. Um, I think that was probably in the hospital on like on heavy drugs. So okay. maybe that's probably the context behind why I didn't want to talk about it the first time. Okay. But do you have an independent memory of telling them that you didn't want to talk about it when they asked you why you think this happened? Uh, um, I don't recall exactly now you said that um, you never saw her with a gun is that right I never seen her with a that night but you knew she owned a gun right yes and as a matter of fact you knew it was recovered in the yard where the shooting took place right it was um probably um, probably like um, months past or some, like, yeah, it was recovered in the yard. But you found that out, correct? I was, it was after her, after the whole incident. Okay. That's Way fine. after. So, but you did find out that that gun was recovered by the police in the yard. Mm, yes. Is that right? Yes. Now, you mentioned that during this conversation 
with Marquise and you, your sister stated to Marquise that my brother can whip your ass. Yeah, she did. She was out. saying other stuff too. Right? Hmm. What's that again? Other stuff too. Um, no, just probably she stated that I can whip, whip her butt just fine. Well, isn't it true that your sister stated that my brother can whip your ass and stuff like that? Um, yeah, probably like that, yeah, well, but why just that. Do you have your trial testimony in front of you? Um, trial testimony? I don't think so. Prosecutor saying you have it. You should have it. Okay. It's like in the 2800s. And I'm looking specifically at 2841. Um, 2841. Okay. Okay, and do you know what page that is? 2841 at the top. It's like the, the first question at the top. First question at the top. Is 2841. Yeah. You want um, to see the question and then your answer? Okay. you want me just to read it to you? Uh, yes, please. Okay. So the question I'm asking you, and this was at the trial of Mr. Lloyd in 2019. Question, while you were out there during this confrontation, your sister stated to Marquise that my brother can whip your ass and stuff like that. Isn't that right? And your answer was, oh, yeah, yes. Is that correct? Uh, okay. Um, and they also stated that that's not going to happen today. I'm sorry. Um, also, by the the also state that that wasn't going to happen today, saying that maybe, but that wasn't going to happen today. I'm not, I'm not understanding you, Mr. Stewart. First of all, I'm, the, I'm saying like, is there, is there more to that? I'm reading you. I'll, I'll read you before that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your question about having omitted your, your Sustained. Isn't it true that you omitted? No, this is a, a pr predicate question, Judge. You need to proceed to read. Did you ever not tell the prosecutor? Sustained.
Did you have contact with law enforcement? Mr. Lloyd? Was it again? I'm sorry, Mr. Stewart. Did you have contact with law enforcement right after this happened? I'm sorry, I'm sorry I got shot. I'm sorry, what? I'm injecting a form of question. What point? Yeah. While you were at hospital and after that, did you have contact with law enforcement? So after I got out of the hospital? Well, let's talk about while you were in the hospital. Did you ever tell the police that your sister stated to Mr. Lloyd that my brother can whip your ass and stuff like that? Um, it's, it's possible, but uh, I don't know if that in the statement. So on the night of this incident, you were at your mother's house and trying to get some stuff done, right? Yeah. And you knew that uh, Markeith was the boyfriend of your sister, Sade. Yeah. They had been together about three months. Yeah, roughly around there. And she was two months pregnant. I believe so. Not exactly sure. And so um, when Markeith came to the door, he uh, tapped on the window and he did a little light flash. Is that right? Yeah, I think it was with his phone. Okay. And you told your sister that Marquise was outside. Is that right? Oh, uh, yeah. And then you went back to working. Yes. And as you testified, the first time you became concerned was when you heard what you thought was the dog in the garage, correct? Yeah. And you had stated on direct examination that you thought it was maybe a bump that your dog made against the garage, correct? Um, yeah, it was like a loud bump that I heard that I mentioned to my family, did they hear that? And after that, after you heard that bump, um, your sister came back inside. No. It was before the bump. It was before the bump. Okay, so she came back inside, she went upstairs, and then she came back downstairs and went outside, correct? Mm hmm Yes. And you said it was about 10 minutes. And at that point, you thought it was a little louder than what the dog makes. Is that right? Yeah. And so you decided to go outside to check on your sister, right? No, not right away. I went to the door, garage door, and opened it, and I'll um, check on my dog to see if it was her. She was freaking out. Yeah, I seen in the window of the garage, my sister on the passenger side of the vehicle and Marquis on the driver's side of the vehicle. And you certainly didn't know what happened before that. Uh, is it what? You didn't? Um, I, hello? 
Go ahead. Is that again? Yeah. I'm not as go for it. All right. So at that point, when you looked out before then, you didn't know what kind of communications they had? No, I didn't know. You didn't know uh, what they were discussing? It didn't look like they were discussing anything during that time. You didn't know what had what had occurred between the two of them? Um, I did not know. I just seen that her eyes were wide open, scared her. Okay, but you knew that, um, you knew that Marquis probably took the gun away from her. Um, I didn't know none of that at all. Okay, I want you to look at your statement. It's dated 12-15-2016, Ronald Stewart. You have that in front of you? Um, is this December, we said? Yeah, December. And it's going to be on page 10. Page 10. Page 10, lines 20 through 25. Um, so, I mean, during that time, I didn't know Shadi had a gun at all. So I think um, probably before all of this, um, they probably mentioned, did you know Shadi had a gun? And I said, yeah, did she have a gun that night? Um, I said, I didn't know. But you said also, so, what else did I you think say? What else do you say in that conversation? Go for it. What else do you say in that conversation with the police? Yeah, uh, I see it on line 23, it wasn't out. I I believe that he probably took the gun away from her. And then do the police ask you, did you ever try to take Marquis's gun? I believe so. Did you ever try to? Yes. Can I say no? But when you were talking to them on that day, you knew that the, that she had a gun, correct? Uh, I did not know she had a gun. Oh, well, I did know she had a gun, but she, I didn't see a gun that night. I didn't see her gun that night. Okay. And so um, at some point you decide to go outside, correct? Uh, yeah, I put my shoes at the check in garage um, and then I went outside through the front door. And in your mind, you're alerted to that there's something going on out there in your mind, is that right? Uh, yeah. And you put your shoes on? Yeah. And you walk to the front door? Yeah. And you open the front door? Mm, yes. And you close the front door? Yes. And the, 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 the door is not locked when you close it? I don't, I don't. I'm sorry? I don't remember the door being locked. So would your statement refresh your recollection? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so I want you to look at page 2846 of your trial testimony at the very bottom and read that and let me know when you're done. I 
have the barrier bomb in? Yeah, it's line 23 through 25. At the very bottom, like on, on page, page 109? No, page 2846 of your trial testimony. I don't, I don't see that page 2846. Did you win this trial testimony? Does he have a different numbering system? I'm impeaching him on refreshing his recollection. Also has a trial testimony that the gentleman was expelled in 2016. Okay. Mr. Stewart, are you there, sir? Yes. Okay. First of all, do you have the trial testimony in front of you? It would be in the 2800s. I have 113 pages here. The, the prosecutor said he sent you the testimony on. I, I do have the trial testimony. Um, but is that label how you have yours labeled? Well, does it have a page 2846? I only see on the right, top right hand side, numbers one, two, three. Uh, I don't see 24, 26 at all. Then that's not the trial testimony, sir. Would you like me to read it to you to see if it refreshes your recollection? <laughs> Um, yeah, I definitely want to see the page for sure, but you can definitely read for me so I can know the, well, the prosecutor has um, a context. Yeah, so the prosecutor has a copy, and if he thinks I'm doing something proper, he'll make an objection, okay? All right. And um, can I read the context a couple before? Okay. And I'm asking you the questions and you walk to the front door, isn't that right? And your response is yes. And you open the front door, yes. And you walk outside the front door, yes. And you close the door behind you, yes. And it's not locked because two of you are outside now, isn't that right? And you answer yes. Did that refresh your memory? Yeah. So the door was open. Yeah, it seemed to be open during that night. Now, you are concerned that you're going outside because you're concerned about your sister. Is that right? Yes. And you don't tell anybody you're going outside, right? Uh, uh, um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember telling anyone. But based on your observation of what you see through the garage, you believe that she is afraid of something. Is that right? Yes. Now, later on, just so we're clear, she tells you to go back inside, leave them alone. Uh, it's none of your business. All those things, right? Yeah, I was just told me to go, go inside. And she said, leave us alone, right? Um, I think she should have said, we're good. I'm sorry? I think she said we're good. Okay. And before you, she says that, you asked, is everything okay? Yes. And Mark, he said they are chilling, right? Yes. Just talking. Yes. Okay. 
And while you're out there, there's this interaction that's taking place between the two of them. Right? And then, um, no. Um, I mean, as soon as I came out there. So, um, what, so we, what, what are you saying? Like, what, in what context are you saying that in? Well, you already admitted that your sister told you to go back inside, right? Yeah. And Marquis said, you know, we're just chilling, right? Yes. But in your mind, you believe that, you know, this is out of control, this needs to end, you're trying to, you know, be the good big brother and quash any possible issues that occur, right? Yeah, see, it seemed like this situation was wrong, right? And you were saying we need to end this and come back another day, that kind of stuff. Yes. And you noticed while you were talking that um, Marquise had his hand in his pocket and he's being kind of fidgety, right? Yes. And he pulled out that hand from that pocket and, and started trying to offer you an explanation of what they're dealing with. Isn't that right? Yes. And he's saying to you that she's smoking pot, smoking weed, she's pregnant, right? And F, F and, F and this dude, yeah. She didn't, she didn't hear you, Ron. You? And, um, F, and F and this dude. And you know that your mom doesn't like Marquise, right? Yes. Even though Marquise would come over the house on occasion, right? Um, yeah, at first it was on occasions, and then she, she wasn't allowed to come inside, but yeah. And so you were aware that there was friction between your mother and Marquise? Yeah. And you were aware that just prior to that, your sister had been living with Marquise in a house, is that right? Uh, I wouldn't call it living, I was probably say spending a night. Okay, so was your impression that she was only spending a night? Yeah. And it's your belief that she, in the last two months prior to that, had lived, was living with your mom at the house? For the most part, yeah. Okay. And you tell him at some point when he's telling you about that she's smoking weed and you claim, you said that he mentions about effing another dude. Yeah. He's actually saying to you that she is has his baby and wants to get an abortion. And they were talking about that. Um I don't recall. Oh. So you don't recall any talk about an abortion? I don't recall. But your goal um, not your, right now. Okay, I'm sorry. Your goal is you're trying to defuse this situation, isn't that right? Yes. Okay. And have my sister go inside and have them go in this car and go go back home. Okay. And so while they're having this situation, this conversation between them. She brings up that Marquise has two guns that she pointed. He pointed at her. Isn't that right? Yeah, she mentioned that. Oh, um, since you're telling that our business, why you mentioned that two guns pointing to in, uh, to my head in the back of the yard. So she's talking to him now. She's saying, you know, why are you 
bringing out our business, why don't you tell him about the two guns that were pointed at her on the side of the house? She says that to you, right? Yes. But she doesn't mention the fact that she went upstairs, got a gun, went to the side of the house, and pointed that gun at Mr. Lloyd. <laughs> There's no conversation about that, right? There's no conversation about that that day. And you, you find that out later, right? Um, I can't, I, I don't recall. Sustain. And so at that point, you have a real heightened awareness that Mr. Lloyd has two guns and that he apparently according to your sister, had pointed them at her, correct? For no reason. Um, Sustained. That's, that's what I heard. And so at that point, you are super concerned about this continuing on. Isn't that right? Um, yeah, trying trying to just get this escalate uh, the situation and like I said, try to have them part ways and talk about this another time. And so it's your claim that you tell your sister to go inside. Is that right? Yes. And the door was open, so she could have went inside, right? Uh, um, not when I saw her run to the door and she leaned on and she couldn't open the door. So, so, so it's your testimony. It wasn't open when you ran to the door. So it's your testimony that between the time that you came out, which was minutes, and the time that this thing happened, the door happened to be locked. Is that your testimony? I believe so, yes. Actually, I don't believe so. I... Say it one more time. It's your testimony that when you left the your house, you left the door open, and that between the time that you left the house and this this interaction blew up between you and Mr. Lloyd, that the door had become locked somehow. Yeah, I, I believe it was locked. Okay. Now, at this point, besides knowing that Mr. Lloyd has guns, he has a hand in the pocket, maybe holding a gun up in his shirt. You know he's got two guns and you're really concerned. Yeah, I knew guns were in the area. And even though Mr. Lloyd and your sister Sade had said to you to go inside, your focus was on protecting your sister. Isn't that right? Yeah, trying to put have her go inside, yes. So while you're standing there in the minute or more, because while this is going on, you're conversing back and forth with Mr. Lloyd, right? Yes. So while you're standing there, becoming aware of the dangerous situation that is unfolding, your escalation, your belief of an escalation becomes very heightened. Belief in escalation? Yeah, you're thinking, maybe I should go after him. Maybe I should tackle him. Maybe I should do something to protect my sister. Isn't that right? No. No. So that never crossed your mind? Never. And it's your claim that Mr. Lloyd, who had just broken up with your sister and only cared about his child, just went off and started shooting for no reason. I didn't know they, I didn't know they broke up during that time at all. Okay. But you found that out later, right? I don't recall. Okay. And Mr. Lloyd just out of nowhere started shooting, right? No, he didn't start shooting right away. It was after we ran to the door, me and Shardy, 
and she was banging on the door. I was standing in front of the door when he stood in the middle of the yard, caught the gun back to put one in the chamber and pop one off in my stomach. So you were at the door? I was at the door with my sister. Okay, so you would have been kind of shielding your sister, right? Say it again? You would have been shielding your sister, right? Yeah, I stood in front of her with my hands up, saying it's not that serious, bro. Now, you remember that no one in your family told the police that they locked the door. Sustained. Did you hear Mr. Lloyd at any point say, what the fuck? I don't recall that. That sounds like a response to somebody who's being attacked. Sustained. Your brother Dominique was inside, right? Yes. He gave a statement to the police, right? I still yes. He told them what he had heard and what I'm not impeaching him, Judge. Sustained on hearsay. You wanted to do everything you could for your sister. Yes. You loved her very much. Very much. And you did everything you could. I believe so. I have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Warner. Mr. Lloyd, settle down. Cross or redirect, sorry. Not, no, Judge, I'm not done. Sir, when you were answering questions from Mr. Buxman, you had said that um, you didn't find out about the gun until months later. Remember that? Um, I said a while. It had, it had to be a while back. A while past, I believe. No, what I'm saying is today you said it was several months before you found out about the gun when Mr. Buxman was asking you questions. Is that right? I would say that probably statement is probably incorrect because um, during my deposition with the police, I, I believe there was the mention of Charlie's gun. And yeah, I think that statement was probably um, not right. So the statement today was not right? Uh, I believe so, because after reading the deposition today, um, again, I believe it was a little after the incident in which the gun was mentioned of Sade's, Sade's gun. Well, you actually had a conversation two days after this incident with the police. 
where you talk about Marquise taking the gun from her. Remember that? Um, I believe I said believe she probably took it away from him. And there's probably some context behind that. Um, because I, I didn't know there was any guns. I didn't know I didn't know her gun was out there at all. Now today, um, you talked about that you and your sister were running towards the door, right? Yes. But you had said earlier that you were walking towards the door. Am I right? Um, I don't remember walking towards the door, definitely running towards the door. So you never said that, is that right? Uh, I don't recall walking towards the door at all. If I did say that, that was wrong. Okay, it was a mistake. Is that right? Yes. One moment, Judge. No further questions, Judge. State re um, redirect. No other questions, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. You are free to go. Thank you, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a good time to break. Your lunch is here. Enjoy your lunch. We'll see you afterwards. Um, we're going to come back at 145. All right, folks, see everybody after lunch. Close meeting, sir. 140.